kids. This week we're learning about Jesus when he was a kid. Do you know that in the whole Bible there's only one story about when Jesus was a kid? We have lots and lots and lots of stories about him as an adult, but we don't know much about when he was a kid. But we can assume that he was a pretty good kid. He never told lies and he was always respectful of his parents. Speaking of his parents, do you remember what the names of Jesus' parents were? Hmm, do you remember? Yes, Mary and Joseph. The one story that we know about Jesus when he was a kid was about when Mary and Joseph took Jesus to a big festival in the city of Jerusalem. There were lots and lots of people in the city and it was hard to move around. Have you ever been to a parade or a festival? There's lots of people and your parents might say to you, now stay close to us or hold our hand. We don't want you to get lost. Your mom and dad didn't want to lose you. Have you ever been separated from mom or dad? Have you ever been lost? Well, guess what? Jesus has too. In today's story, that's what happens. Jesus gets lost and separated from his parents. But before we get to that, we were talking about at a festival there are lots of people and I'm gonna show you a picture right now. Look at the picture. There are lots of people in this town. There are lots of people all over the place. Can you help me find my friends in this picture? The first one is dressed up like a dragon. There he is, circled in red. The next is this girl with pink hair. Can you find her? There she is, circled in red. Oh, this girl's being flown away by balloons. Oh, way over there between the buildings. And what about this guy golfing? Can you find the golfer? He's golfing on top of a building. Thanks for helping, boys and girls. Let's watch our video now and find out what happens when Mary and Joseph take Jesus to a festival. After Jesus was born, wise men followed a star to Bethlehem to find the new king of the Jews. The wise men worshipped Jesus as king. When they left, an angel told Joseph in a dream to leave Bethlehem because King Herod wanted to kill <laughs> Jesus. So Mary, Joseph, and Jesus went to Egypt until Herod died. Then they went back to Israel and lived in Nazareth. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Passover was the biggest holiday for the Jewish people. Many people traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate and remember when God saved his people from slavery in Egypt. When Jesus was 12 years old, Jesus and his family went to Jerusalem together. When it was time to go home, Mary and Joseph began traveling to Nazareth with a large group of people. They didn't notice that Jesus was not with them. They thought he was among the group of travelers, but Jesus was not with the group. He had stayed behind in Jerusalem. Mary and Joseph had been walking for a whole day when they started to look for Jesus. They looked among their relatives and friends, but they could not find him. So Mary and Joseph 
went back to Jerusalem. They searched everywhere for Jesus. The city was so big and Jesus was just a boy. Finally, they found him at the temple. Jesus was listening to the teachers and asking them questions. Everyone who heard Jesus could hardly believe how much Jesus understood. When Jesus' parents saw him, they were surprised. <gasps> Mary said, son, why have you done this? Your father and I were worried. We've been looking everywhere for you. Why were you looking for me, Jesus asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But Mary and Joseph did not understand what Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus went back to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. Jesus was always obedient to them, and Mary remembered all of these things. As Jesus grew up, he became even wiser. Mm. God was pleased with him, and so was everyone who knew him. God sent Jesus to earth with a purpose, even as a child. Jesus wanted to honor God. God blessed Jesus as he got ready to follow his father's plan, to die on the cross and rescue people from sin. Mary and Joseph found Jesus. They were looking for him. They even left the city and came back to find him. And do you remember where they found Jesus, boys and girls? Can you tell me? One, two, three. The temple or the church. Jesus was listening to church leaders and understanding everything that they were saying. Everyone was amazed by how much Jesus knew. Do you sometimes surprise your mom and dad or your teachers or grandparents with how much you know and what you can do? All the people that Jesus encountered were surprised at how much he knew and what he could do. Jesus surprised people with the amazing things that he could do even when he was a kid. So that got me to thinking, have you ever heard of world records? When people do something amazing, other people want to know about it. So every year they make this book. And there are kids in this book. And in this book is world records. Things that somebody has done that nobody else has ever done before. Or the youngest person to ever do something. Or the oldest person to ever do something. And there are lots of things in this book I'd show you. But it's just filled with all kinds of amazing world records that people have done. And so I started looking up and thinking... There must be some amazing kids who have broken world records, and I found a few. Patrick Frazier, I'm going to show you a video of the youngest person to juggle five balls at once. And he did this when he was 13 years old. Watch this. And then there's Montana Ken Kenny, the youngest person ever to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. This is the highest mountain in Africa, and she did this with her mom when she was seven years old. Ben Mooney was also seven when he lit started linking together paper clips. Actually, he was seven when he finished this. He linked together a bunch of paper clips. And eventually, he had 66,000 paper clips all linked together. That makes a chain that is 6,554 feet long. Now, how long is that? Well, that's like if you went and you started at McCain's here in town, and you linked paper clips together, and you went towards town. So you went under the bridge, in front of the post office, in front of the old bridge, kept going all the way along the road, river road until you got to the road that the church was on. That's a lot of paper clips. And this is Ben with all his paper clips. 
That is a lot. All of these kids did amazing things. Juggling, climbing a mountain, the highest mountain in Africa, putting together paper clips until they were the longest that anyone has ever done before. These are amazing things. The people in the temple were amazed by Jesus. Kids, last winter, spring, I got you guys to do some amazing things. And then I tried them and I couldn't do them. What is something that you can do that's amazing? Maybe something that no other kid can do. Maybe it is something that is other kids can do and you can do it as well, but it's still pretty amazing. I can tell you one thing. God created you. God made you as an amazing child. He created you and he made you for a reason and he loves you. Just like everyone at the temple was amazed by Jesus, God is amazed by you. And God is amazed by all the great things that you can do. So kids, what is something amazing that you are able to do that would please God and make him proud of you? Just like Jesus was in the temple and the people were all amazed at him, what is something that you can do that pleases and amazes God? That's a big question, isn't it? But I'm sure that God loves you, cares for you, and is amazed by all the great things that you can do. Even if it isn't climbing a mountain or doing juggling, maybe it's showing your teacher at school that you love them. Maybe it's helping your parents uh, do some chores around the house and helping them out. Maybe it's showing your friend that you love them or writing a letter, drawing a picture for someone that you care about to make them a little more happy. These are the things that God is amazed by. So what can you do today, this week, that God would be amazed by? All right, boys and girls, I'm going to see you back here next week, and we're going to talk about baptism. Maybe you can ask your parents what that is. Maybe you know and you can tell them. But next Sunday, we'll be back here and I will tell you about the time that Jesus got baptized and about what that means. Bye, boys and girls.